Welcome back to another episode of Food Waste Matters. I'm your host, Dr. Joanne Freeman from Honey and Fox. Now, this episode, we're going to continue our discuss- discussion with some of our incredible future leaders. So today we're picking up from where we left off and we'll be speaking with two research students from End Food Waste Future Leaders Program. And to start off today, we're going to be speaking with Hector Vera Wood from UQ and Hector's only just started his uh, PhD research and his topic revolves around developing innovative formulations of bio-based controlled release fertilizers. And we'll come back to that research in a minute, Hector, but welcome to Food Waste Matters. Now, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and how you chose this research topic or did it choose you? Thank you, Joanne, for having me. Uh, we Actually, I was working already with uh, developing fertilizers and testing different recycled and, and nutrient sources. So it's a continuation of my previous research that I already have done. So it came the opportunity, so I just jump in. And what about a bit about yourself? What made you decide to do a PhD? Uh, well, I've always loved research, like since childhood, like even as a, as a kid, I already have always my small paddle in, in my house. So I kind of always a family background in agriculture, so I've just always been playing around with plants. So, And so, Hector, tell me about this particular research project and what you're hoping to achieve. Uh, we are trying to develop fertilizers that um, deliver the nutrients in a more controlled way, so we um, avoid nutrient loss in many ways like leaching or runoff or all the way that we can lose nutrients. So we're trying to target the efficiency of the, all the nutrients to try to reduce the amount of, that, that we need to produce ideal in crops. So Hector, just to be clear, how is this project going to reduce waste or in fact transform waste? Actually, we are trying. We are working with the waste that it's non-avoidable. So the waste that we we uh, all the teams are trying to avoid the waste, but with the waste that it's not possible to avoid the producing, we are trying to transform that to avoid selling those waste to the landfills. So we are using byproducts from the food industry or compost produced by food scraps. So we can just recycle again those nutrients and put again those nutrients to the food uh, systems. So Hector, what type of waste are we talking about? Food waste and organic uh, waste from gardens. So it's fogo compost that we are working with. And so can you uh, tell us about your research method? How are you going, you know, what is your research plan and how are you going about collecting your data? Well, actually, I have some like four steps. In the first steps, we are testing how the compost or how these nutrients um, are delivered to plants and how the, the, the compost influence the, the nutrient dynamics in, sm- in, like in, in just in glass hole experiments right now, like pre- preliminary work. So we're going to use those data as a base to the, to the next steps that we're going to produce the fertilizers, then we're going to test the quality of the fertilizers in in the lab, like with quality assessments, and then we're going to escalate that to experiment in Glasshouse to test the effectiveness of the the fertilizers that we're going to produce, and then we're going to reach to the field level. And so I understand, Hector, that you're only at the very beginning stages of your PhD research, but looking ahead three years, where... Where do you hope to take this research? What are some of the things that you're trying to achieve as a result of this research? Well, actually, we are trying to come up with a innovative a fertilizer, like actually develop a product for the end consumer. So not just do research for like great literature, but ended up with a product that we can deliver to to the producers and and uh, creating new 
new not innovative solutions for revalorizing the, the waste that we're producing. Before you leave us today, Hector, can I ask you, are you enjoying doing your PhD? And also, what are some of the challenges you've come up against so far as you, an er- you are an early researcher? Well, I, I'm, I'm loving actually the, all the, the research pathway that I'm taking right now. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with experiments right now at the moment. So it's normally it's kind of weird to start directly with experiments. But as I already have like a bit of experience in, in the area, we just go straight away, not just doing the boring literature review and all that stuff. Um, well, the main challenges that I'm facing right now, it's uh, that there are not much uh, experiment in my research area of using this kind of products to deliver a fertilizer. The, there's a lot of different products that gonna use the, the, that they are currently using as a biomaterial to produce slow release fertilizers, but not such as compost. So they are using a lot of biochar or um, other other biomaterials, but not with this one. So it's kind of uh, a bit difficult to come up with info to to use as a, as an input for developing the products. So maybe a challenge, but also a fantastic research opportunity for yourself because you could be the leader in this piece of research. So exactly. So on that note, that's a wrap on our interview with Hector. Hector, thank you so much for joining joining us today and sharing your very early stages of, of research. Really enjoyed our chat and I wish you all the best and I look forward to an update perhaps this time next year on how you're going with your research. So thank you once again. Thank you for having me, Joanne. See you. Our episode today continues our series with another research student from the Future Leaders End Food Waste Program. So I'd like to welcome Mary Aday from UQ and her PhD research topic is all about optimising the compost supply chain. So Mary, before we dive into your research, can you tell us a bit about yourself and why you decided to do a PhD particularly in this topic area. Uh, hi. hi. Okay, so I am looking at cost benefit analysis of compost use in Australia. So basically, what are the costs? What are the benefits of using compost in Australia? Now, why I went into this research particularly was because I am interested in circularity and sustainability. Now, there are lots of unavoidable food waste that occurs in Australia. I mean, talking about like 10 million tons of unavoidable food, organic and green organic waste that occurs in Australia. And I have a background in agribusiness. So I'm always looking at like the the business side of things, like how is that going to profit? And in monetary terms, that's like 2 billion Australian dollars. (laughs) <laughs> that's it's, a lot of money it's overwhelming isn't it to, yeah, to look at it like that yeah so i am looking at okay so this fugal waste how can it be transformed into compost and then that compost will support for production and then it gets back onto our table and that's circular economy because if it doesn't it will end up in landfill and then which will result in greenhouse gas emissions which impacts climate change and will eventually impact agriculture. So Mary, I understand you're in the in your the second year of your PhD. Can you tell me about your methodology? How do you go about collecting data, doing your cost benefit analysis? So, you know, just tell us about that methodology. Okay, so first and foremost, I co-designed a questionnaire with um the astute producers of the Air Peninsula. So I started by, I drafted a questionnaire and I felt like, no, I can't do it. I, I'm not supposed to do it, but I, I need to engage stakeholders. And who are the primary compost users? They are the producers. A farmer, a producer would want to 
make an income and then sustain their farm for future generations. So if you're going to tell the producer to use compost, the producer has to know one, the economic implication and then the environmental implication. So that is why I'm doing an economic and an environmental cost benefit analysis. So in this case, the environmental cost and benefit is translated in monetary terms. So I first went and co-designed my questionnaires with them. So I have a conversation with them on the cost they had to incur, be the capital cost, the fixed cost, the operational cost in using compost. And then the benefits they have gotten out of the compost, like as in the yield and the quality of their produce and also some of the environmental implications that has to. So Mary, you went out and talked talk to farmers. Yes, I, I actually came back from a field trip yesterday from Adelaide. And so tell me, Mary, you know, how receptive or interested were the, the food producers with your research? Oh, it's, it, it's beautiful. I love the reception. They all seem to be interested in because it's, it's cost and benefit. I mean, they are, they are doing business. So they all seem to be interested. And one key thing I keep hearing from them is come back with your results. We need you to come back and then tell us what you got out of this research. And that's exactly what I intend to do. So after that, I would go and give, I'll give them back the results. And then we take it from there and then we could develop a roadmap of compost use in Australia. So Mary, when are you hoping to have your roadmap ready to go back to industry? Hopefully next year, December. Yeah, I'm hoping to get a roadmap to the industry because if we, now the, the, the challenge we are facing is the demand for compost. Now, if we could be transforming the fugu waste into compost, but if, no, no, if there is no demand for it, it will end back into landfill and then there is no point in this. So I intend to get this out and then get the roadmap to help increase the demand for compost in Australia, in, in, in Queensland and in Australia. So. so Mary, what happens to Mary a day after your PhD is finished? Well, after my PhD is finished, I intend to dive more into, go research more, get into an area of research where I would promote more circularity and sustainability, like that will help promote more circularity and sustainability in Australia. So you're certainly going to stay in this circularity space post your PhD? Most definitely, most definitely. Okay, so that brings us to the end of our discussion. Oh, so soon. <laughs> Mary, look, thanks for taking the time today. It's really clear you're hoping to make a significant impact in the fight against food waste, especially with your passion within the agri-food industry. Thanks again uh, for your time and I wish you all the best for the rest of your period, uh, your PhD journey. Thank you so much for having me, John. I had a great time. So that's all for today on Food Waste Matters podcast. I'd like to thank both Hector and Mary for sharing their passion and expertise with us. It's really interesting to learn about their efforts and the potential impact that their research is going to have on reducing food waste. So if you'd like some more information about the Futures Leaders Program, head over to www.nfoodwasteaustralia.com.au where you'll find information about the program managers, the research students, and their research projects. And to our listeners, I appreciate you joining us today and hope you find these discussions with our research uh, students as interesting as I do. So remember to subscribe to stay up to date with Food Waste Matters or also if you want to find all our other podcast episodes, head over to www 
foodwastematters.com.au. Thank you all again for listening and I'll see you next time.